Hello, and thanks for being here. I'm Kate with Sally Tomato, and I'm excited to introduce the Free Soul Bag Tutorial. This is a sleek crossbody bag with both a magnetic and zipper closures, and you'll find an exterior slip pocket as well as a nice deep interior zipper pocket. This pattern is a collaboration with the amazing design team, Carry Courage. They are known for their handcrafted, earth-conscious products, inspired by a, the sustainable fashion movement. So join me, and let's make a free soul. First, take a few minutes to review the recommended fabrics on the back cover of your pattern, and then gather the fabrics and supplies that you'll need. You'll want a main fabric, a contrast fabric, and a lining fabric. If your lining fabric is very lightweight, you may want to use a fusible woven interfacing as well. You'll also need a small selection of hardware, a slider buckle, swivel hooks, D-rings, chain strap connectors, and you could substitute rectangle rings in place of the chain strap connectors, and the rivets are optional. You'll also need two single slide zippers. Two great designer details are a handmade label and a tassel cap. Again, they're optional, but they're really fun to add. Our Sally Tomato hardware is available in nickel, gold, antique, gunmetal, and rose gold to complement any fabric that you have, and it coordinates with the zippers. Then gather a few helpful notions, such as thread. I'm using sulky 40 weight poly deco thread, clover wonder clips, a rotary cutter or scissors, pins, chalk or removable pen, basting spray, basting tape or glue, paper tape, a stiletto, a seam roller comes in handy, and then a hot hammer or a hot ruler. You'll also want a zipper foot and possibly a Teflon foot. It makes it easier to stitch over the fabrics. Refer to your free sole pattern for cutting out all the fabric pieces that you're going to use. You may find it helpful to label your pieces as you cut them by marking the name of each piece on the wrong side with a removable pen or piece of chalk. Fuse the interfacing to the coordinating lining pieces if you are using interfacing. The next step in the pattern is to attach the invisible bar magnet snap. Now I'm going to share a great tip from Phyllis, one of our customers, who carefully marked the placements of the bar magnets at this step, but she did not attach them until later. That way her magnets weren't always sticking to her sewing machine, which is a great idea that she gave us. So I'm going to attach the bar magnets later as well. So for right now, we'll only mark the placement of the bar magnet snap on the wrong side of the main front panel following the measurements in your pattern. Okay, let's move on to the applique decoration. On the wrong side of the outer applique, mark each short end with a dot and then draw diagonal lines to the corners and cut along the marked lines. We'll do the same for the interior applique. The exact measurements are included in the pattern once you have them cut out, center the inner applique on the outer applique, adding basting tape to hold the layers together. Now center the assembled applique just down from the top edge of the back panel. The long edge of the applique should be parallel with the short edge of the panel. You certainly could add a different applique if you'd like. I have a second free sole bag started with a dimensional bow applique using Jess's crinkle pattern. I've simply top stitched the bottom part of the bow to the right side of the back panel. An embroidery design would be fantastic here. Use your personal library of patterns and embellishments to make your bag truly unique. Set your stitch length to 3.5 millimeters and insert a new top stitching needle. Top stitch the applique in place an eighth inch from the raw edges of both applique pieces. Install a handmade label centered against the right side of the applique. This step is optional, but it shows that your bag is an original and we should be proud of our craft, right? Be sure to visit our YouTube channel to view a video tutorial on how to install this type of hardware. 
All right, time to make the exterior slip pocket. With right sides together, position the slip pocket lining over the slip pocket exterior, then align the edges, holding the layers together with sewing clips. Shorten the stitch length to 2.5 millimeters. Since we're doing construction, we're going to need that shorter stitch length and sew along the top edge with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now fold both pocket pieces wrong sides together, aligning the raw edges, and then press the seam with your fingers or a seam roller. Top stitch an eighth inch from the seam. Remember to lengthen your stitch for the top stitching. Then baste the sides and bottom a quarter inch from the raw edges. You can use a longer stitch length for the basting too. Basting stitch is just holding the layers of fabric together. It's okay if the lining peeks out a bit. You can trim the excess lining even with the main fabric. Position the slip pocket on the right side of the back piece, aligning the bottom and side edges. Now baste the pocket in place along those sides and bottom edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Are you ready to go on to the interior zipper pocket? Jess has detailed video tutorials for bag making techniques on our YouTube channel and she has some great tips for this pocket. This interior zipper pocket will allow you to turn the bag through the lining, which is really pretty cool. Now that your pocket is completed, let's move on to the strap connectors. Fold each main fabric strap connector in half, wrong sides together, matching the longer edges. Use sewing clips to hold those edges together. We're back to the machine to top stitch an eighth inch from each long edge. Slide one D-ring over the end of each connector so it's in the center. Then fold each connector in half, matching the short ends, and add a sewing clip to hold those ends together while we head to the machine. Now simply baste across an eighth inch from the short ends. Position the connectors on the right side of the exterior back panel, directly above the exterior slip pocket, aligning the raw edges. The D-rings should face towards the center of the panel. Baste each connector in place with a quarter inch seam allowance. With the connectors in place, let's move on to the top zipper. Double check that your zipper is about an inch shorter than the top edge of your panel. If you need to, you can trim off just a little bit from one end of the zipper and it will make the assembly easier in a later step. With wrong sides together, fold each zipper tab in half, matching the longer edges. Slide one zipper tab over each end of the zipper so the raw edge is tucked in between the folded tab. Each end of the zipper should be pushed tight against the fold in the tab. You can add a few sewing clips just to hold those tabs in place. Now top stitch the tabs to the zipper an eighth inch from the raw edge, removing the sewing clips as you stitch. Trim the sides of each zipper tab even with the zipper. With right sides together, center the zipper along the top edge of the main front panel. If you're right-handed, the zipper should open towards the right side. If you're left-handed, the zipper should open towards the left side. Secure the aligned edges together with sewing clips. Baste the zipper in place with quarter inch seam allowance, making sure that the zipper pull is out of the way as you sew. With right sides together, layer one lining panel over the front panel and zipper, and then align all the edges, securing that top edge with sewing clips. Sew the top edge together with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Move the zipper pull as needed to maintain an even straight seam. Now finger press the lining and the zipper away from the front panel. Next, top stitch the front panel an eighth inch from the seam, catching the seam allowance. Repeat these steps to attach the main back panel and the remaining lining piece to the opposite edge of the zipper. This is where our friend Phyllis attached her invisible bar magnets while the bag is still flat. Align the magnets to the markings and then tape them in place, making sure the attracting sides of the magnetic snap are both face down on the wrong side of your fabric. You might notice I did mark an X on the attracting sides of my magnets just so I wouldn't forget. 
Paper tape works really well because even if it's sewn through, it tears away very easily. Make sure you move the lining panel out of the way before stitching. I'm going to tape and stitch just one magnet at a time. Set your stitch length to 3.5 millimeters and use a zipper foot or a narrow foot to top stitch as close as possible to each magnet. Make sure your bobbin thread matches your main fabric as the stitching is going to show. I'm also going to use a small piece of sewing foam just to separate the magnet from the sewing machine itself. You do need to be careful though that the foam doesn't get stitched into your project. With both bar magnets attached, remember to trim the plastic close to the stitching. Now place both front panels wrong sides together and both back panels wrong sides together. Unzip the zipper halfway to prepare for turning later. Now it's time to assemble the bag and lining. Bring right sides together, aligning all edges of both main fabric panels, and then also bring right sides together, aligning all edges of the lining panels. Hold those edges together with sewing clips. A zipper foot or a narrow foot is highly recommended for this step to allow easier stitching near the zipper tabs. Begin by sewing the layers of the lining together using half inch seam allowance and continue past the zipper tab, being careful not to sew through the zipper tab. Then sew the layers of the main pieces together, this time using 3 8 inch seam allowance. The wider seam allowance for the lining helps the lining fit neatly inside your bag. Remember, do not sew through the zipper tabs. If you sew just two or three stitches across the corners at a diagonal, turning the bag right side out will be a little easier and your corners will look very neat. Trim the lining seam to a quarter inch wide and then trim all four corners at an angle to reduce the bulk. You're ready to turn the bag right side out by pushing the main fabric and lining through that bottom unsewn edge of the zipper pocket. Now gently push the corners out to shape them, then reach into that unsewn edge of the zipper pocket and secure the pressed edges with pins or sewing clips. Now top stitch that unsewn edge of the zipper pocket closed with an eighth inch seam allowance. Now let's add that top zipper pull. With wrong side up, fold the contrast zipper pull in half, meeting the short ends. Thread the short ends through the pull from the underside to the top side. Next, thread the short ends through the looped end and tighten. The adjustable strap is the final detail. I followed Jess's video tutorial to make the full leather crossbody strap and attach the slider buckle. Top stitch across the secured layers or insert a rivet. Be sure to check out the video tutorial for installing rivets on our YouTube channel. Next, thread the opposite end of the adjustable strap without the buckle through a chain strap connector. Then thread the end over the center bar of the slider buckle. To complete the strap, thread the remaining end through the second chain strap connector and fold the end of the strap about one inch to the underside and secure with top stitching or a rivet or a combination of both. Thread one strap end through each remaining end of a chain strap connector. Fold one end under and secure with top stitching or a rivet. To complete the strap, thread each remaining strap end through a swivel hook. Now fold about one inch of each end to the underside, again securing with top stitching or rivets. Another design option is to add a tassel using the tassel cap hardware. Jess has a great video tutorial for the tassel cap hardware, which you can view on our YouTube channel. I hope you love your free soul bay as much as I love mine. Have fun making more than just one. Just by changing fabrics and embellishments, it can look completely different. And all of us at Sally Tomato would love to see your rendition of the Free Soul Bag. So tag us with a photo at hashtag Sally Tomato, hashtag Carry Courage, and hashtag Free Soul Bag. I'd like to extend our sincere thanks to Carry Courage for their collaboration on this wonderful project. 
and I'd like to thank you for sewing with me. See you soon.